Hello peacemakers, welcome to a brand new week here on i24 News. This is The Tube and that's what's in our show tonight. Amazon's new smart voice assistant, Google marks Berlin Wall's 25th anniversary, Ford taps Israeli startup for augmented reality car, too many cooks, too many, yeah, that, uh, the social watch and more, but we're starting with some dark net play. <laughs> One year after the fall of Silk Road, an international law enforcement coalition has delivered another crippling blow to the deep web, busting a ring of online black markets and arresting the alleged leader of the organization. Now all eyes have turned to a marketplace called Open Bazaar, designed from the get-go to be impossible to shut down. Open Bazaar is fundamentally different from all the online black markets that have come before it because it is completely decentralized. If authorities acted against Open Bazaar users, they could arrest individuals, but the network would survive. This is quite similar to what transpired around music downloads in the Napster era, as decentralized file transfers took over users' hearts and keyboards, leaving the vulnerable centralized networks behind. Until the migration to Open Bazaar is complete, the FBI can take comfort in arresting the online persona DEFCON, identified as Blake Benthal, a 26 year old in San Francisco, who the agency claims ran Silk Road, uh, Silk Road 2.0. So, way to go, FBI. Okay, nobody bought the latest Amazon Fire phone, but that will not stop the empire from trying to become a hardware company. And here comes Echo. Amazon Echo is a speaker that has voice assist assistant built in. If you ask it a question, it got an answer. If you tell it to remember stuff for you, it complies. It can play music, it can tell you the weather, it knows when you enter the room. Echo is an always-on speaker that you can place in any room and turns into the futuristic homes we've been dreaming about. It's like the assistant computer from the movie Her, yeah, something like that. It had uh, this very corny promo video, but someone has already managed to put out a parody of it, so here is the parody of it. Is it for me? It's for everyone. It's called Amazon Echo. Well, what does it do? Alexa, what do you do? I'm a talking cylinder. I exist only for companionship and utility. My existence is utterly meaningless. Awesome. <laughs> Alexa, play rock music. Rock music. Alexa, stop. Wait, I want to try. Alexa, what time is it? It's time for you to calm the f**k down. You actually don't have to yell at it, okay? It uses far field technology so it can hear you from anywhere in the room. Echo is pretty neat because it knows all sorts of things. All you have to do is ask. Alexa, how tall is Mount Everest? Mount Everest is like probably the biggest mountain. I heard a guy died trying to climb it. Plus, Echo's really good at keeping track of things like shopping and to-do lists. Paper. Alexa, add wrapping paper to the shopping list. I've added wrap albums to your shopping list. <laughs> yeah, that's the parody, and it's the same commercial, but they change in the parody what Alexa says. So, that was it. So, is Amazon Echo a game changer? With me in the studio to answer this and possibly other questions is our very own Shai Ringel. Good evening. Good evening. So, is it a game changer? Voice assistant? Is that really the next big thing? Voice assistant is already the next big thing for quite some time. Uh, everybody is trying to get into the business. Um, of course, Apple has Siri and Microsoft have uh, Kotara. And uh, Amazon really wants into the game because it wants us to buy things without even thinking about it. So what Echo can bring is the idea that now I want a paper towers. So mm -hmm. I will just say to the air magically, I want paper towers. There's going to be a machine that can hear me and put it in the list and buy it for me. Wow, and that this sounds can really be, convenient. This, this can be a game changer because uh, the Amazon Echo can do that and a lot more. Uh, answering questions is kind of the small thing it can do. But if we're talking about big things, it can like... Uh, uh, connect to your home smart home so you can tell it to uh, put the light down or open the door for somebody so, so you don't have to think too much about 
the things you need to do. You can just say it into the air. And this has been a vision that a lot of companies tried to do. Um, Microsoft tried to do it with uh, the Kinect mm -hmm. they put on their Xbox, which can also hear you the entire time, time but it still can do the things we saw from the promotional video from Echo. You know, we had Amazon phone, Amazon TV series, uh, plans for Amazon drones. Now this, any chance that this is what's going to uh, uh, yeah. get Amazon uh, into the hardware? Yeah, Amazon really wants into the hardware um, uh, field. And they're trying their best. And something is not, uh, something is not going well for them. There. Let's talk about this specific product. Yeah. Does it look good? Does it look... It looks very good. Nobody just tried it yet. It's mm -hmm. just a promotional video. If it does work like it works in the promotional video, uh, it can be really a game changer in the sense that we can now talk to the room and the room will understand us. This is just you know a small speaker, but if it can really hear the entire room and we don't have to shout at it, you know, there are a lot of uh, small technical problems with all those voice assistants. One of them is that I don't feel natural when I'm talking to one because I kind of shout into mm -hmm. it and it doesn't really understand my accent. Uh, you know, Scots hate those uh, voice assistants because they don't get them at all. And it's an entire joke in uh, Scotland. And a lot of countries, a lot of other countries, they don't get the accent. There are a lot of small technical difficulties, but uh, tech, uh, tech companies really want into the business because they want us to forget that we are talking to a computer. And um, the echo seems to be like, if it really can hear us, it still don't have the personality we want it to be. It's still very uh, much as an uh, assistant. It's what do you mean the personality we wanted to have? Do we want it to have a personality? Yeah, tech companies will want to have it a personality. Uh, Apple is really working hard at it to put some personality into Siri, but it is an artificial personality. It's not an organic personality like we saw in a movie, in the movie Hair. Um, we want to feel like we're talking to a human being and not a computer. If we'll talk to a human being, we'll, being, we'll feel comfortable talking to him and we'll feel comfortable letting him know what we want to buy, which is the main goal of a product like Echo. Um, we are really looking into things like that, if, if we can feel comfortable with our products. And voice assistant is another step in that direction and the next step will be to put an organic real personality to the product which can understand us which can kind of relate to us mm -hmm. and and then we'll feel very comfortable buying things from I don't it. know if I'll have uh, if I'll have something in the uh, in the bathroom that I can just say need more uh, toothpaste that mm -hmm. will save me weeks of mm -hmm. eh, uh, now, but the last, now, uh, now think about complaining, I don't have any toothpaste. And there's a voice t uh, telling you, oh, I just uh, bought you one. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. That sounds amazing to me. Uh, okay, Shai, thank you very much. Thank you. Let's move on. Yesterday marked the 25th and uh, 25 years anniversary since the fall of the Berlin Wall, and Google has marked the occasion with a festive video doodle. When it was toppled on November 9th, 1989, it marked the end of 40 years of division in Germany and paved the way for the official reunification of the German people in 1990. Google's very moving video for its doodle is a journey around the world looking for pieces from the wall. They even found one right here in Israel in artist village Ein Hod. Check this beautiful video out.
that's really beautiful. Happy anniversary. Uh, okay, now for some Israeli tech news. The Israeli producer of augmented reality navigation system Michol 3D has been chosen by Ford Motors to put the system in its future car models. According to reports, Ford will pay Michol 3D an undisclosed sum to make the navigation system suitable for Ford vehicles. Michol 3D system uses information like geographic location and accelerometer sensors to determine where on the windshield to position the navigation graphics using lines, arrows and other symbols to guide the driver on their route. Like many other Israeli startups, it, it also has origins in the Israeli army. So good job anyway, Michel. Sometimes people report having felt a strange unseen presence around them and they may attribute it to a ghost. Now in a new study, scientists describe how the ghost is an illusion made by the brain. In a series of experiments, the researchers from Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lesson in Switzerland were able to trick the participant's brain into creating the eerie sensation with the help of a robot. In the new study, the researchers created a robot to trigger the ghost illusion in a few dozen healthy people by causing a mismatch in their senses. Here is the ghost making robot in action. In 1970, alpinist Reinhold Messner is about to have what he considers to be a supernatural experience. While descending the slopes of Nanga Parbat, he suddenly feels the presence of an invisible climber behind him and to his right. This phantom presence phenomenon has been reported many times by people who have experienced extreme conditions, as well as patients suffering from schizophrenia. EPFL scientists have now managed to recreate this ghost in the lab. Their device can induce this type of hallucination in healthy subjects. We observed that all of our subjects as a group experienced to be in the presence of another person, of another human person, and to be touched by that person. The second finding is, is about the phenomenon itself, the feeling of a presence. It has been described in many extreme circumstances far away from the research laboratory. So this is the first time we're able to induce it experimentally using a custom design. Ghost. Okay, in case you missed it, uh, check out Too Many Cooks. It's an 11-minute parody of 80s sitcoms opening sequences, and it has been generally breaking people's brains the past few days. Beginning on October 28th, the video aired on Adult Swim at 4 in the morning over several consecutive days, and has since won over the internet. People got obsessed over the video, trying to find out who made it and why, dear God. Why? The less you know, the better. We can only give you, well, the tip of the iceberg with this short intro, and you should thank us for the rest. It takes a lot to make a stew. A pinch of salt and laughter, too. A scoop of kids to add the spice. A dash of love to make it nice. And you've got too many cooks. Too many cooks. Too many cooks, 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 too many cooks. Too many cooks. Too many cooks. It takes a lot to make us do. When it comes to me and you, and him and her and the baby too, too many cooks is true. To say it goes, it'll spoil the broth. Okay, you have to watch the whole thing because it gets really, really crazy and crazy. Watch the whole thing and it's funny and it's interesting and it's crazy. Let's move on. San Antonio spouse Marco Bellinelli is known for his deadly three-point accuracy. So there's no better player to challenge a robot for a three-point throw competition. Yay for humans.
it. This show is over. Thanks for watching. Log on to our Twitter and our Tumblr. It's the Tube 24. We'll be here tomorrow. And always remember what James Joyce had to say. Shut your eyes and see. Goodbye.